Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of Wednesday Night Shooting. I am Tanya Rogers. As always, I am here with the lovely Andrew M. Swift. Uh, say hello to the folks, Andrew. You got to speak now. Hey, guys. What's up? Okay. So this past Sunday was the 2017 Royal Rumble pay-per-view. And um, we're going to get into the show and all the fallout. But we're going to talk about someone who wasn't really at that show. But he was at TakeOver the night before. He wasn't supposed to be. Seth Rollins, he crashed the show. And that was uh, supposed to be what led to Triple H finally coming back to Raw to address this. They did all that. And they, they ran that angle. Um, and then, you know, instead of physically confront Seth himself, he had Samoa Joe confront him, which brought, you know, this that was, I guess, Samoa Joe's official call up. But interesting enough, during this little small physical confrontation, Seth Rollins re injured his knee. I don't know how I didn't watch the video. I just like, I just found out like an hour ago, really. I was like, what? <laughs> What is this? How did he? But uh, so that leaves the plans because basically we've kind of known ever since Seth Rollins was injured the first time that he and Triple H would be facing each other at WrestleMania this year. That was the plan. That's always been the plan. But like, I guess he could come back in time for WrestleMania. I guess I read that. Like, have they officially? I think, I think that's highly unlikely. I think so too. But like, I've read stuff that was like, "Hold on, wait a minute, he could still come back in two months." And I'm like, "Nah." <sighs> two months, like a uh, 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 knee injury. Uh, I don't know. like. If it was like just a just tweak, just... they wouldn't have gone like public with it, you know. Like if he was just gonna be out two weeks or something. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it looks good for him. No. So we're all speculating, like, well, what are they going to do? See, to me, it makes all the storyline sense in the world to just be like, uh, well, that's done for now. Triple H won. He can go back to being <laughs> creator. Like, seriously, there's no, they, they now, like, Triple H didn't have any problems with anyone else. Nobody was calling him out. Mm -mm. Yeah, you know, certainly. Like, there's no reason for him to come back on TV. He won. He got what he wanted. Seth Rollins is going bye bye again, and he's not going to be bothering him. So, so what do you think they're going to do? You do you think they're going to? Because you know, a according to Vince, well, let's see him Punk tell it. Vince thinks that wrestling Triple H at WrestleMania is the main event. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously, one would assume they're going to try to find a place on the card for him. I don't. I don't know. Like nothing seems to match up, really, though. No. You know. So. I mean, it's hard to say because we still don't entirely know the direction for, you know, a lot of stuff that's going on. We we are pretty certain in some on some things, but like people for like. Did Sammy have any plans before? Like, was he in a match? Or was he just going to be in, like, a cluster United States? Well, are they going to do, like, a U.S. Championship ladder match? Or, I don't know. It's hard, to, it's hard to say. Like, we know probably a couple of matches that are going on. But then when it gets down to, like, the Sammy Zayn level, like, I don't really know. Do we even know who Braun's working? No, that we don't. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's a... It's kind of up in the air at the moment. There could be some weird multi-man match that they have like planned in for the U.S. championship, U.S. title, or something that um, they might pull someone out of to give to to Paul. I I personally think they'll just not have him wrestle, but because it just I don't know. There's there's nothing that really makes sense to do off of like a two month build. Um, right. It's like the only the only one possible thing would be like is if KO confronted him 
on uh, like next Monday and was like, why did you bring like Samoa Joe? Y'all thought like I was your guy or whatever, and then you could turn KO face or something. But then they have those plans for they have the those. That's kind of crazy, though. Why would he care? Like yeah, I know, they, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Like it's just a a thread to pull at, you know. Like there's no I, real I justification, but. You could do something. Also, it is kind of curious how like Ko has never said anything about how Triple H just gave him the title, and like I mean, you know. he, he he told Stephanie this past Monday, you know, that he he's he's doing his best to like live up and make them proud or oh, whatever. I didn't, I didn't hear that. So maybe so yeah. When when he was trying to when he was trying to get out of the match with Braun and he was whining to. I mean, he was whining the whole goddamn night. When he was whining to Stephanie about that, like he was talking about how he's doing everything he can to make them proud in that vein. So maybe they could take that and Triple H be like, "Well, since I came back, by the way, I'm not proud of you." Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? But Triple H is so good that he's going to go in the ring and give a promo about KO and totally make himself the face like he did with Seth. Mm -hmm. Totally and completely. Like, I don't, like, this almost is a blessing in his disguise for Seth. Because, like, <laughs> a little bit, Seth, yeah. He is about to get buried. He is about to get, okay. That's just, the promo he gave with Steph. Now, I did, I did the raw reviews. That was the first week. Uh, I said I was going to stay on and just do the raw reviews for the Rose WrestleMania, but they really are trying my patience. First week out, and I was like, <laughs> so fuck. Uh, but anyway, like, so I'm going through the comments, and most people are pretty much like with me, like, yeah, it's kind of weird. He's threatening Stephanie and Triple H's kids. Yeah. But of course, there always has to be some Seth Rollins stand that's like, oh, it makes perfect sense. And blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you can say all you want to that this makes sense, but this, the way he is behaving, especially Stephanie didn't like, it, I mean, they're so good with their burials. They are so good. Stephanie was not her usual Stephanie. She wasn't insulting. Mm -hmm. She didn't try to slap him. She didn't do anything that would get her heat. In this segment, she did. She did not. Her confrontations with Roman were designed better to get her heat yeah. than that segment with Seth. Triple H has yet to show his ass for Seth Rollins. Yet this whole time, he showed ass for Roman twice. It just didn't fucking work. And everybody remembers, oh yeah, he did the mocking uh, Roman Reigns, but he did that once. He got that shit in good, a good beat down. Everybody loved it. Yes, yes, yes. He knew that was going to work. But he just, he did that to him once. Then he did one promo where he was like, wrestling is my religion and I'm doing this all for you. But that was like, I feel after he was like, you know what? This ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get myself over. Right, but, yeah. But with Rollins, it was right out the gate. Like, yeah, NXT, that was great. Seth Rollins looked like a baby face with fire. But, like, he doesn't work on NXT. He works. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, you know, uh, he doesn't book that show. You People don't really understand Triple H's title. He is the executive vice president of Talents Live Events and Creative. He's the executive vice president of Creative. So don't tell me what Triple H cannot get on the air and what he can. So, like, it's crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there is some. I mean, in NXT, it's like all trips. Like, you know, he can do whatever he wants, basically, to book on that show. Um, and you know, he certainly has some input on Raw, but is not the final say. So, like, I've, I've, I. <laughs> I feel like that's the whole, I kind of feel like that's what it comes down to though. Like on NXT, it's like Seth is booked to like look like a really cool dude, like making a surprise appearance on TakeOver, Storm in the Ring, mm -hmm. cutting a promo, you know, and then Trips backing down from him, you know, doing that whole like, oh shit, 
um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm just going to send my security out and just walk away. So like, that's like specifically designed to make uh, Seth look really good. But the raw segment was not like the whole kids bit and like calling, saying like, get out here, buttercup. What did he call her, buttercup or something? Get out here, buttercup. Or, or he called her sweetheart. He called her babe. Buttercup. I think he used at least two of those sorts of things. And I, and both times right. I was like, oh, all right. Well, we're, we're over his face turn already for me. You know, like I was like, cause Saturday I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm into Seth, face Seth now, you know, like I was, uh, I was on board. And then literally Monday mm -hmm. when, I, when I saw that clip, I was like, oh man, that's over. Listen though, you 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 you've been writing about how Triple H is this great worker. So doesn't it make sense that if Seth gets booked well on his show and then doesn't get booked on well on Raw, everybody's gonna be like, "Well, Triple H did everything he could." You see how he did it? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, yeah, okay, hell. okay, you're hard as hell. <laughs> You are not wrong there. To be fair, that is that is a valid valid uh, thing to bring up. Huh. However, but it also just could be that like Vince is bad at like at writing like a baby face promo for a guy like Seth Rollins. Like yeah, that that could also be the case. I do like your uh, nefarious theory though, because that's a lot of fun. I do love my uh, Triple H conspiracies. It falls in line. It really does. But um, we'll see. Do you 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 got anything to add to this? Because I mean, like, we really don't know anything. They haven't told us so. No, I mean, it's it's a really bad break for him. You know, uh, yes, he's gonna miss Mania two years in a row. Two years in a row, and and effectively the Rumble two years in a row. Right, you're right. You he did. He didn't yeah, show up on Sunday. Absolutely. So like that's and that and that's coming off of like a what an eight month run with the with the top belt so that's that's a big step back that's 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 some prime time of his career that he has just lost completely so i don't know we'll see we'll see when we hear more of you know how severe the injury is but i i think SummerSlam is what we got to start to be like expecting is my guess so especially because I don't yeah. think they want to they want to rush him back considering it's like is it the same knee I don't I didn't yeah. even, it's the same knee okay so I think like they might be extra careful hopefully we'll be extra careful with him instead of like trying to get him back for money in the bank or something just let him sit out another month and a half for SummerSlam so I don't know all right well let's move on to the Royal Rumble match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great or anything, but um, and people, you know, yeah, only a certain, certain if you weren't Braun, Undertaker, Goldberg, or Brock Lesnar, you you didn't really get much shine. But uh, people were all talking about. See, this is my theory, and I've had it for a while, mm -hmm. and I I think I'm right. Uh. SmackDown is the underdog babyface brand. So, of mm -hmm. course, they're going to get shafted on the Royal Rumble. Of course, they are. Of course, they're only going to have two matches and one is on the pre-show. Of course, they're only going to have 11 guys in the Rumble and most of them don't do squat. Of course, they're the babyface underdog. You have to keep rooting for SmackDown Live. You have to. They're the babyface underdog. If they come out of joint pay-per-views looking well, you cannot say that Vince is trying, oh my God, Vince is trying to ruin SmackDown. He's so jealous that that show was better, even though he booked like that, that, I don't, like the people who legitimately think Vince wants to ruin the show that he is booking. Like, I, like, really? Why doesn't he just book the show like Raw then? <laughs> <laughs> Book Raw better <laughs> than SmackDown because he doesn't. He hasn't at all since the split happened. Mm -hmm. But he, but he totally wants SmackDown to fail. Totally. Um, it's it's okay. it's interesting. You you talk about the the baby face like underdog brand. SmackDown is kind of like what NXT used to be. Yep. You know, and like 
it's got the whole same feeling like oh i'm watching the alternative product to raw you know yeah, like that doesn't that, want me to like this exactly exactly <laughs> it's like he's got your fucking money mark you know like and the, and i play it up a little bit too i'm not gonna lie uh, but I'm the SmackDown reviewer, so I gotta kind of have some little, you know, partisan bias. Um, I like I like defending SmackDown; it's fun. But yeah, it's it's the old NXT, you know, because NXT is now kind of adrift. Although it might be getting, might be getting back, uh, might be getting back to some good stuff going on. So that looks pretty good. But yeah, SmackDown is Vince still is getting your money. Like, don't think you're sticking it to him. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to let for everybody listening that, you know, not in the threads. Apparently, Seth Rollins is out for six to eight months. So Holy you know, shit. Yeah. Yeah. They just posted it in the thread. So, yeah. But, Holy <laughs> but uh, I hope I didn't throw your train of thought out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I was I was done with that train of thought, I think. OK. Pretty certain. So let's you let's talk about number 30. <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> I I died. I died. I loved it. I hoped he went. I hope. I mean, like, I had, you know, I'd been following the uh, the odds all weekend long, so I knew Orton was going to win for you know like two days straight, basically, because he was the favorite pretty much as soon as um, the odds went up. But when I saw Roman come out, I'm like, oh man. Please tell me they switched it at the last minute and said Roman's going over. Because that shit would have been, especially when he threw out Undertaker. And you know how I feel about Undertaker. So I was yeah. all on board the Roman train at that time. I was like, he was talking shit to Taker. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Let's go, Roman. I was, I was like, <laughs> losing. I was literally losing my shit. And all over, boo. And I was like dying. It was great. I enjoyed the hell out of it. <sighs> Yeah, and peop the people who were like, they didn't send Roman out there to get booed. Yes, the fuck they yes, did. Yes, they did. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. You, you have no concept of wrestling if you think that they thought Roman was going to get cheered at all, at all when he came out at 30. Mm -hmm. And as Austin so eloquently said, Stone Cold, he was like, he put he put Roman over huge on his podcast. He was like, dude was great. He went out there. He did the absolute job for Randy. He's like, like if if Samoa Joe or anybody else had been number thirty, the story coming out of Rumble would have been, oh, another old guy won. Oh, WWE is just for the old guys and attitude era and blah blah blah. But the story now is all about how Roman Reigns is the ruiner of. All things. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and like Roman's like, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take it because everybody's talking about me, and I'm still gonna get those big checks and those big merchandise. The, the merch checks. Like I posted in the daily the next day, somebody who was actually there was like, there were a lot of kids in my section, mm -hmm. and they were all cheering for Roman Reigns. You just could hear them over the grown men who. Are booing him? I, and that's, and yeah. That's, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. I, I love the detail in that post that was like the twenty-five to thirty-year-old men who are all wearing replica titles. I was like, oh, <laughs> that <laughs> is such a burn! Oh my god, I died right. for that. It's, exactly. So um, I thought it was a brilliant piece of booking, and mm -hmm. people, and, and there are some people like, oh, poor Roman. I'm like, he does a millionaire. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't feel, please don't feel. If if Roman like, here's how I've been for a while with his booking. If he's not concerned enough to try to change it, I'm certainly not going to be more concerned than he is. I'm just going to try to enjoy what I can, and I love that. Uh, yeah. Under yeah. Undertaker shouldn't have been out there. He wasn't ready to go. No, he looked, looked bad. Awful. Yeah. He, he just you know. Cause I I really want that to be the mania match. I really want it, and like, <laughs> if there's a reason, like Undertaker, he looks more like like he when the way he was staring down Roman and the whole interaction, he looked like he's up for this. 
last year, just go back and watch any segment from the road to WrestleMania he was involved in. He had a look on his face like, man, I really don't want to be doing this shit. I don't want to <laughs> fuck it. Damn it, man. I don't want to sell these shitty ass punches. Yeah. I'm just being I'm just being loyal to my boss. <laughs> but it seems like he's up for it. And so it it could like people like the match is gonna be terrible. And I'm like, might maybe, maybe so. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, there's a way that it can be booked. Uh I'm just there for the spectacle because it's WrestleMania, like mm-hmm. And they're going to give me one little nugget. I wanted this match to happen last year. So I'm hyped for it. I'm telling you, there's nobody that can convince me otherwise. I love it. Yeah, I, I if that if that is indeed the match, I just, I hope Roman squashes him. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. You know, I know they're not you know, gonna do that. I know. No, I, I, I had to stop myself because they might. If they the might. Hurt. If he's too hurt to yeah. like really go in a full match, they actually might just have like a little exchange, and then Roman's like, "Ooh, ah, it spears his ass, and it's over." Oh my god, I would, I would probably like, I would the have heat. a little. The heat. Hmm. <laughs> And then, like, they're like, and little kids aren't going to like that. I'm like, you you really underestimate, like, how smart little kids are mm-hmm. sometimes. And little kids realize Undertaker's old. Old as shit. So probably, yeah, and they're probably like, oh, Ro-, like I said, Roman's the new Undertaker now because <laughs> he beat the Undertaker in WrestleMania. <laughs> I, Mom, I want two more of his shirts. He's the Boom. Undertaker now. <laughs> there you go. While the grown men with replica belts are like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. His whole career was to make Roman Reigns look strong. (laughs) Some or some bullshit like that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. It's it's truly bizarre. That I mean that the name of this show is a tale of two pushes. And it's and one of them is Roman Reigns, because it's truly bizarre that the dude can lose a championship match. At, the, at Royal Rumble, come out at number 30, lose the Rumble, and still people are calling him over push. That doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't, but here we are. Here we are. Here, here we are. Right? Here we is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John Cena is mm. now 16 time. How about that? WWE. Yes, he defeated AJ Styles, which I'm okay. I'm a little salty. Mm. It, it, I am. I'm a little salty because they because he did the same thing to Styles that he does with everybody else. Just wanted I just wanted it to be different, but it's, yeah, I realized it's not gonna be. There's not gonna be any little wrinkles or character traits. I just have to get over that. That's my issue. Cause he big leagued him when he was getting his when he was losing, and then as soon as he wins, he's like, "Oh yeah, this guy is the greatest." Ever. Like, why why won't you be humble when you're losing? No, no, I'm just gonna big league him, and then I beat him. Oh, I was wrong about him, yeah. but I beat him, so haha, it doesn't matter if I was wrong about him. So I would taste in my mouth like about AJ, I was like, oh, now you're going to put him over, huh? Like, doesn't matter. You got his title. <laughs> I was a little salty about that, but I just wanted you to address the uh, the rumor about what Cena's going to be doing at Mania. Ooh. Yeah, because it, it involves our queen, Nikki Bella. Apparently, uh-huh. apparently her neck is just not going to cooperate, and she's going to have to retire so apparently the match is for mania is john cena and nikki bella versus miz and maurice and i know some people are not going to like it but i really think those people are going to be in the minority because nikki bella seriously only gets heat from these mouth breeders online yeah that's her <laughs> everybody else loves her so I think John Cena and Nikki Bella and like that's her last match. 
I think that's going to be one of the greatest. If this is if this is actually going down at Mania, that's probably going to be like one of the biggest highlights from the show because like everybody else, all the heels are probably winning. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, for sure. Oh, oh, and also because Nikki Bell is not going to be involved in the women's SmackDown women's title picture. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Becky's supposed to get her. You know, she's going to get her WrestleMania moment. So. That that's great. Everybody who's saying, Be- "Oh, Becky deserves better. She doesn't deserve this. She's always losing. She's gonna. She is right now, as of now, until plans change. She's penciled in to get her WrestleMania moment. So that's a good thing stemming out of this. And thank you, John, because John Cena's got that stroke, and he'll he's ha- he's the one that's like pushy for this match. So you know, they're not in a position to tell him no, because he'd be like, "Fuck you. I can just." Go to Hollywood. I don't really need this. <laughs> <laughs> if Becky Lynch does indeed win the title at WrestleMania again, thank John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's. Uh, I tell you what, I would make that match the main event. Like, I'm not even kidding. I don't. I don't have any interest at all in Brock versus Goldberg. I don't care whatsoever about that. Like. Put that on the pre-show. I'll be very happy about that. Like it's gonna be four minutes long. It's not gonna be interesting. We've already seen the interesting thing about it. What are they gonna do? Work like a fucking grapple fuck match? Twelve yeah. minutes of grappling now? Like no, it's right. It's not like either of them can go like an extended like lengthy match. So I don't know. That's gonna be dumb. But the spectacle of. Miz and Maurice versus Cena and Nikki. Oh my God, that is that has got WrestleMania main event written all over it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if that was for me. Main. For I me, mean, at least. Yeah, like I know, and a lot of us smarts feel the same way. We're like, it sucks. It's really sad about Nikki. It really is. But goddamn, if that's the match, shit, sign me up for the main event. Seriously. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. Um. Uh, so that means that the WWE title match is allegedly Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. That's the plan. But I hope because even in like dead ass Corpus Christi, they got a we want Harper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I even if he doesn't win the match. Just to have him in the match in a triple threat, especially with the added, uh, like, stip that he will not hit Bray Wyatt. Like, he wants to sister Abigail him for some reason. Like, he, he wants to do that, but he will not fight Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. He will not go into fist. So, if, like, if that's, if he could be added, that would be great because I think he did kind of deserves. He's he's the one who's been driving the narrative of the angle. He's the one that's made it very, very, very interesting. With his subtle, like, he never trusted uh, Randy in the first place. And uh, through everything, everything they did, he was always giving Randy that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he's always giving him that look. And he was the one driving the narrative. And I just think it would be a shame if he was left out of the, the overall story. You know what I'm saying? So I really hope they decide to put him in that match. Who would win? Like, I, I don't think Harper would win. No, Bray, Who would Bray, win? Bray? Bray? Bray should definitely, if because he's supposed to win the title in the elimination, elimination chamber. chamber. Yeah. I, I think Bray, what I think should happen is that at the end, Luke Harper's like, fuck you, Randy. And, and he they double team Randy. And you know, then uh, he just sets back in the ring and watch Bray pin Randy, and he's the champion. Cause like Eric Rowan's got to be back soon, so yeah. you know he he can have he can have Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, and he's the champion terrorizing SmackDown. That's how I was like. Randy Orton doesn't need another title, you know. He doesn't. No, he really. Doesn't. <laughs> so Bray should Bray should win, no doubt. But I hope Luke Harper's in that match because I feel like it helps the overall story. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Harper has definitely been like the driving force of that story, like for sure. Um, and it's been going on for so many months now. By Mania, it will have been like a, what, eight month long story, which is unheard of in WWE. Like that's insane to be basically telling one consistent narrative thread for eight months straight. That's That's really impressive and doing it well too. And, uh, and like starting at a point where a lot of people were like, I don't care at all about this. And then like getting to a point where a lot of people are like, yeah, if that's, if that's the title match of mania. I'll sign me up. Like that's quite an accomplishment right there. You know, especially the guy who is like as dead as Bray Wyatt was, uh, going into the brand split. So I don't know. We'll see. It's weird to me because, ah, man, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of, um, I'm just not a huge fan of taking the belt off AJ. I gotta say it. I, I'm just not, especially with like what the plans, the rumored plans are for him. I'm just, and I know it's like a big deal, but man, I do not care at all to see that. You know, I feel like, ah, God, I don't know. That's, it's mania. Like I'm, you know, I'm at this. I'm at the point where. I want things for WrestleMania that aren't like the concept for WrestleMania. You know, it's not like good storytelling matches, you know, like classic matches to end good stories. Although we were just talking about it for the title, you know, but um, it's not what I want it to be. It's, it's the spectacle, which sometimes can be good with like the Cena, uh, Nikki mix tag, Miz and Maurice, but it, but sometimes, like, when you got people like like Shane McMahon working, possibly working the best wrestler in the world, it's just, that's kind of a letdown. I don't really like, I don't really want to see that. Um, it's kind of a bummer for me. But maybe, maybe that's not, maybe that's not actually the plan. I don't know. The only, the only good thing about uh, Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles matches, Shane might be the heel in that arena. And if he gets oh, booed, for sure, yeah. If he, if he gets booed, I'm going to love it. I'm going to laugh and cackle. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah I bet he, okay. actually, that's a fair, yeah. I don't want to see it either. I don't know anybody who's like dying to see it. All the response I've seen from that rumor is even people, it's like, they're resigning to the fact that it's going to happen. Yeah. They're not like, yeah. hyped for it. They're like, well, you know, on the bright side, this means they they believe in AJ Styles if they're right. giving him Shane McMahon. And yeah. they're like, if that's the only thing you can say about them, like it's damning with faint praise, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. It's stupid. But they should be able to find something better. I, Shame and man doesn't need a guy. Like I can, I can see them trying to find a match for Undertaker, a match for Triple H, a match for Brock Lesnar, a match for Goldberg. But I just, in my head, I cannot phantom why, other than he's Vince's son, why they have to find a match for Shane McMahon. That's just the stupidest shit. Yeah. He's the he like. He's the real ruiner of things, not Roman, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Let's talk about the universal title picture mm. because that's really murky. Like, the best thing on Raw was that we found out that not only is Braun Strowman like the biggest, baddest motherfucker, he is also smart as hell mm -hmm. because he has, he has video evidence that he will bring up on your ass if you promise him title shots. And unlike other people who are just like waiting for the match and let Jericho interfere, no, he's going to fucking take Jericho out before he takes on KO. That like run over so huge on that show. So I don't think he's going to be in. What I think is going to happen is that Goldberg, because Brock Lesnar challenged Goldberg to, at Mania, I think Goldberg's going to be like, fuck you, guy. I've already beat you. I don't have anything to prove. I don't have a reason to fight you. I want to be the universal champion. So they're going to give him a match with KO at Fastlane. And I fear for KO. I do too. Because Goldberg can't work a long match. Nope. So I think, I think KO is going to get squashed. And I think the universal title program is going to be Brock Lesnar. And people think Brock's going over. I don't think 
I don't know. If it's for the universal title, I'm really going to doubt that Brock's going over. Like, really going to doubt it. Because Goldberg just signed a contract to be on three Raw brand pay-per-views after Mania. So, in a row, if he's not going to be the universal champion, what the fuck is he going to be doing? Yeah. Like, there's, like, there's not so many guys that are going to be putting him in the ring with. So I think the this is my opinion. I don't. Some people are like they're going to have Jericho lose the title to Sami Zayn, the U.S. title to Sami yeah. Zayn, and then Jericho is going to get mad because KO did help him defend his title, and then he's going to like I turn face, and the Universal Title program is going to be Jericho KO. Now that makes a whole lot of sense. It does, and if there were no part timers around. I would think that that would be the universal title match, but they have they have Lesnar and Goldberg, so I think that's going to be like that's the only reason I think because Vince is like they said this is his little special pet project, so I think he's going to like put a title on because like why why would Goldberg take up the challenge of Brock? Yeah. Why would why should he care? You know, like I dude, I own you. Every time we're in the ring together, I win. No. <laughs> I I you're not next. You were la- you were the last guy. I'm looking next. I'm moving forward. <laughs> so, I don't that's that picture isn't gonna get resolved until March when Fast Lane happens. So Yeah. When is is it like early March? Like Yeah, I early. think it is. I'm not really sure what day it is. So wait, what? Oh, that's 2015. That does not helpful. Uh, March 5th. March 5th. In was in Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's a, that's a difficult. I have no idea where that's going, and I don't know what's going on with Sammy. I don't know what's going on with Braun. There's a lot of open questions, and Fastlane is like a full month away, so we're not going to really have answers until then, at least. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be an interesting time on Raw in the men's division. Yeah. So, okay, let's jump from the Universal title to the Raw Women's Championship. Now, it, it, like, before, what ha- before Monday's show, I thought it was legit going to be Nia Jax versus Charlotte. I did. I did. But I do think it's going to be a fatal four way, and Bailey and Sasha are going to be in there so Sasha can turn up. I think Bailey, I think they're going to put Bailey over. I do. (laughs) You're laughing. But I think, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. This, if it's, it's, if it's, it's a four fatal four way, Charlotte doesn't get pinned. Oh, I will be. Listen, listen. So Charlotte can continue to say mm-hmm. she's never lost a singles match, a one-on-one match. See, they'll still have that narrative that Charlotte's never lost a one-on-one match in pay-per-view. And they can still say 16-0 and or probably 17-0 and because she's probably facing Bailey again at Fastlane. Who knows? But I think Bailey's going to pin Sasha Ooh. to win the title. Yes. Ooh. And and then that's such a bad Sasha idea. And then Sasha's gonna turn on her because they planted the seeds this past Monday. That is this- having her pin Sasha is a big mistake. Pinning Nia, okay. Pinning Sasha is a big mistake because that's going to mute the reaction that you want. Because well, I mean, people that's- are still salty about Sasha. Some they stands, are. some stands like this guy, like this motherfucker over here. <laughs> but, but I think WWE does not foresee anybody turning on Bailey. I and I honestly don't think like to turn on Bailey unless they keep giving her like suffering succotash type promo, which they might. They might. <laughs> you never know. They might. But I really do think, and then. Charlotte and Nia will spin off into their own feud. And then Sasha Bailey. But you know, that's all speculation. I'm I, I I'm fully 
prepared for Charlotte to pin all three in the middle of the ring <laughs> and, and see WrestleMania fully prepared for it. But I'm just saying you know, what I think yeah. they might do. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what, Tanya? I've uh, I've been coming to the conclusion uh, over the last couple of weeks, and uh, I had some money left over. So I, I was – I took the advice of uh, one Randy Orton, who uh, I don't know if you remember, but way back in the beginning of his uh, Wyatt family angle, cut a promo backstage and said, if you can't beat them, join them. Join so, it. yeah. in that sense, I want everybody to look at the shirt that I am wearing right now. Oh my God. Oh Boom! This is epic. You have a Charlotte Flair shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I like, hate her so much I bought her shirt. You and 12 other people have a Charlotte Flair shirt. <laughs> I'm so happy you told that joke. I didn't want to tell it. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I have a Charlotte Flair shirt. And nobody go look at the WWE shop and see how much it is because that will totally lessen the impact of this shirt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I got a Charlotte shirt, everybody. It's, it's, wow. it's entertaining. I literally bought That's it just great. so I could do that on this show. That is absolutely wonderful. That's that's wonderful. That's she's great. Gonna keep, she's going to keep winning forever. Like, that's that's all that's going to happen. By, by the way, Andrew, you can no longer get mad about people shipping you with Charlotte. You know that, right? What? That's, <laughs> why not? You have her shirt too. <laughs> so what? I have I have shirts of like five di five different women's. Wait, how many? Four. Wow, how about that? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, nobody ships me with anyone but Charlotte, and it's really bothering me. I don't like it. <laughs> I know you don't. I know. I like, know. if you're gonna ship me with a tall blonde, at least have it be summer. You know, come <laughs> on. like seriously. Oh my God! I uh, I'm I'm literally crying. ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's wonderful. By the way, I just want to let people know. Like, I know that there's some people who watch my show and they enjoy my takes, and they cannot stand Roman Reigns. Mm. I'm gonna tell you the reason why I picked this picture right here is just so some people can say. Oh, he used to be tag champs with Tyler Breeze. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I was like, maybe somebody will like him after they see this picture. <laughs> I just got off topic, but... Um, what, uh, what was his name then? Leaky or something? Leaki. Leaki. Oh. That, that is his uh, God-given name, Leaki. Wait, no, no shit. Yeah, that's his first name. It's not spelled like leaky. And has, there's a T in there. Oh, I don't yeah, know Lee, yeah. Yeah. Moans pronounce their T's, but his first mm. name is Liaki. <laughs> his name is Liaki Joseph Anawa. So, yeah. He was no born a people. month and 20 days after me. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know who was born on the same day as me? Charlotte. <laughs> I, I know, that. I know. Had to. <laughs> I had to, though. Okay, what is, uh, what else is there? Um, I don't know. Ross sucks. <laughs> like, I gave the show an F. It was a high F, but I gave it not because I didn't think the show was bad per se. There were only things that a couple of things that were bad. The reason why I got an F is because this is your wrestling. The Royal Rumble Fallout show. This is like the first show leading to WrestleMania, and you give me a dull show, and then you pop, you give me Braun being wonderful, and then mm -hmm. you bring up, and then you bring up Samoa Joe and think I'm supposed to get excited about it. No, no, no. You're the flagship show. You're the big moment show. You, no, you have to do more. You got to do better, Raw. And as long as I'm reviewing it, I'm not going to get hyped about. Like I know Gino would have loved that Paul Heyman segment because he's like he loves Brock Lesnar. I could give a shit less about Brock Lesnar and his facial reaction. I don't give a fuck. 
that's all I see you do is react to the shit uh, Paul Heyman says. It's not cute. I don't care. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's a lot of people. Some, it's, it's a couple of people that were like, you, you're way too harsh, dude. I'm like, if this was a Raw in like the middle of September, it probably would have been like a B-plus show. It's a fucking F because this is your Royal Rumble Fallout show and this is what you give me. Hey, get the fuck out of here with that. A bit excited about Roman and Braun. I thought, like, who who wins that? Like, they keep putting people together where neither one of them should be losing. Braun should not be losing on the road to WrestleMania. Roman should not be losing. So if we figure it's going to be a screwy finish, what's the fucking point of the match? Just to have a match? Like no, is that two, what Raw is? Just to have matches, like for the most part, yes, to have matches and to keep the lights on until the part timers show up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, but it's sad, and they need to stop doing that because, like, it lessens my excitement when I kind of already know there's not going to be a definitive winner, and if there is, like, like I know there there are people who are going to be pissed off. That Roman beat Braun, regardless of when it happens. But like, and I think it should happen. I absolutely think he should be the one to beat to pin him first. I do. However, it before WrestleMania, or they could do though, is make a multi-man match for the Universal Title, and then like have Braun in there, Roman in there. They should just have every match at Mania be a multi-man or multi-woman match. Will be. Right. I'm That's kind of what it's like, sounding like. Trying to get everybody. They have so many, so many wrestlers now, and like to make to like have all these singles matches. Like people are complaining about a six-hour show. Shit. To be twelve. Don't be a, yeah. Right. <laughs> You'll be watching with tears in your eyes, like, you know what? I'm going to bed. Forget this, man. I'll watch the rest tomorrow. <laughs> but I think, see, th- this would be a better idea than just straight up Goldberg versus KO. If there's a multi man match where they can kind of hide Goldberg, that makes more sense. That, may- that actually makes more sense to have a fatal four way with those four guys. And then Goldberg who whoever- pins whoever. Like, fuck. Vince, Vince will probably have him pin Roman shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think whatever Roman's doing at fast lane, the lights are going to go off and the gun's going to hit. I do. Whatever Roman's mm, doing, mm, mm. he's going to go for his spear and the lights are going to go off and the gun's going to hit. You know, dong. And the lights going to come back on and the Undertaker's going to sh- kick him in the dick. Because <laughs> that's what he's got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take your secret weapon, the dick yep. kick. He's like, shit, I'm too old to be tussling with these young bucks. I'm just gonna fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, you know what? I wish, I wish I could get like, I wish I could put money on that scenario happening right now because I absolutely <laughs> would now that you've said it. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, Rome is gonna get kicked in the dick at Fast Lane. I do. Huh. I like oh. it. Well, let's uh, talk Elimination Chamber. Mm. We have uh, John Cena defending the title, of course, in this chamber. And Baron Corbin, Miz, Dean Ambrose, AJ Styles, and Bray Wyatt are the other five guys. This is apparently when Wyatt's going to win the title. We kind of already talked about that. This is because, you know, everybody, the thing about the Elimination Chamber is Everybody got has to be pinned. Everybody except for the winner. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, what I hope is that they break from because I I I'm t- I hate the elimination chamber. I really do. Like people will be shocked. Like really? And I'm gonna tell you why. They they always agent the match so formulaic where they're they people are just fucking around and doing shit until all six people are in the match. And then they start eliminating people. And then the order of lim- eliminations is so predictable. It's like the person they're pushing the least is gone first. And then the two people who are really beefing are the last two. It's 
so predict. So I really hope they break from that and we get to see some eliminations, like some special matchups one on one, and some eliminations that happen before all of the pods have been opened. Like I really hope that happens. But like, who would you say? Who who do you think the final two are going to be? Because I think the final two might be Bray Wyatt and John Cena. I think they yeah, I, I because. See if if they're making Wyatt, you know, the champion leading in, they're gonna have, kinda wanna make him look strong. So they're probably gonna have him pin the champ to win the title. Yeah, I think that uh, makes sense. I buy that. Or it could be super buy- interesting and they could take Cena out first. I mean they'll never oh, do that. Wow. They'll never do that. But No, he no. But like if they did, who would pin him? Styles, Styles. Styles. yeah, because then you get because then Styles is like, oh shit, here we go, it's I'm back, baby. But then he has like five more guys. Oh my god, right? That would like nobody would buy that like in the beginning, and they just had like a five minute match. Well, maybe they could because it's like a hardcore match. So if AJ Styles brings in like a chair, he has he has something he a chain or something. I don't know. It could work, but I, I think we're going to see all six men like a clusterfuck and then predictable eliminations. And if they have, I like, I hate the way that match is form- yeah. formatted. And it's very, the only elimination chamber matches that I've liked is when they've broken from that. And they very rarely do. Like, I the, hate that. Yeah. The, I mean, like a six person match is hard enough to structure, but the fact that they're all contained. And like nobody can just like lay around on the outside for like five minutes, you know? Like you can do it, but you're clearly in the ring and people can see you, you know? So that's kind of weird. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know if I, well, I guess I saw 2015, but I think I must have blocked all that shit out of my head. So I don't remember. Yeah, oh my God. Other than Kalisto climbing, I all, I'll never forget that image. But. They were both terrible. They were both terrible. Like, they didn't have any. <clears throat> the one for the IC title was funny because Mark Henry's pod got broke and he didn't know what to do. And then everybody. And then you could literally, like, it was, an, it was a business exposed. Like, you can't really expose the business. But, like, it was a business exposing moment because they're literally standing there and Dolph Ziggler's literally, you could see Dolph telling people, okay, you do this and and then they're like, okay, reset. Let's do it. (laughs) No. God, no. But it was perfect because like, like, that was like Ryback's only title win, so it's like fitting that he would have a trash match (laughs) for his only title win. God. Oh no, yeah. The less said about Elimination Chamber, that pay per view as a whole, the better. Well, didn't <laughs> wasn't that the uh, Owen Cena one? Was it? Yeah, I think so. It's been so long. Like, that was uh, fun. That was a uh, fun match, but yeah, that was fun. But then when they kept having the same match over and over, over okay, the exact fun. same oh. match, yeah. Yeah. Only only John went over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other yeah. So, yeah. Like pretty much the only difference. Yeah, uh, we pretty much covered like all the possible angles heading into Mania, right? I think so. I think so. So, is there anything you just want to banter about? You know, any, anything you want to get off your chest? Uh, I feel like I, I had a moment when I was writing my when I was watching SmackDown. And I was writing my uh, SmackDown review, and people were kind of like, people kind of like the show or whatever. And I was kind of down on the show. Like I upped my grade a little bit at the last second because, like, there were three like really good. There were three like good TV matches. There was the tag to open with Cena, Harper, and the Wyatts. There was uh, the main with AJ and Ambrose, and then there was the women's tag match. And all those were really fun, good matches. But there was no like really good promo segment or like backstage brawl or anything like that. And so like that just kind of killed the whole show for me. Like I was watching and I was like, these matches are fine. Like, you know, but like 
And like, I know they're doing something with them, but they're not, I don't know. So I kind of came to this revelation that like TV matches just, I feel like the reason why I'm so into SmackDown is because I don't really, like TV matches are not my big thing. Like I don't want to see like a three and a half star match every week on the show. You know, that's not my requirement. So I feel like that's why I'm so generally pro SmackDown because it does a lot of like, you know, promo like a lot of talking segments, a lot of innovative talking segments, a lot of off-site stuff, a lot of backstage brawls, you know, that sort of thing. So I, I don't know. I, I was looked at the, the raw, like I didn't, I watched like the last hour of raw or so, but I didn't watch the first couple hours. Apparently it opened with like straight up with a, with the Zane Jericho match. And I was and like, when I heard that, I was like, why are they having this match? Like, there's no reason for it whatsoever. Like to have that match. They're like, we're just going to run this match. And I and like, when that's like my biggest problem with Raw is when it just runs matches to be like, all right, we're going to run this match tonight. Like, it's like a house show, but it's televised, you know? So I don't know. That's, it's sort of this philosophical difference I've been discovering about myself. I don't know if you feel the same way or uh, at all or not, but that's why I feel like SmackDown works for me particularly really well, and Raw doesn't. I've just been thinking about that for a couple of days now. Yeah, there should be reasons for matches for the most part. That is true. What I want to talk about and what we have ignored and what most crowds around America have ignored is the Cruiserweight division. Mm. Uh, Neville's doing good work but like in order for an act like that to actually work you have to have a baby face uh, opposing him that the crowd is into and yeah. i think they, they might get that there with jack gallagher but they're not there yet and so it just kind of seems like crowds don't like at first crowds were responding to neville and now they're giving him the same silent treatment they were giving all the other little babies so I don't know what they're going to that division over. Somebody made a suggestion, because New Day wasn't even on the show, that Kofi is small enough to be in the Cruiserweight division. I don't know if he is. but I, I think Xavier Woods is. But even if they aren't, lie and say they are, because they're over. And, like, have, like, Two of them go after the tag title and who's ever the odd man out say, you know what? I think I want the Cruiserweight Championship. I do think that might help because people care about the New Day. Like they don't about like anything that's going on. Like literally Tony Nese's gimmick is that he's boring. And they're putting him over guys who like when they do moves, garner a response. Like, how do you fucking... Like, Mustafa Ali was doing some very innovative offense, and the crowd was quiet until he did some things, and, you know, they're like, oh, that's nice. And then, as quick as it happened, he lost. And then after the match, they're basically telling the crowd, this guy ain't nothing but a look, and he's boring as hell, and there's no reason for you to get invested in him. And I thought that was odd <laughs> I was like I don't think that's how you get someone over by telling the crowd this dude's boring there's nothing to him <laughs> I don't know I, you know we'll we'll see but like, it's especially weird, especially weird to do that after the yeah. East wins. wins right like, like, like <laughs> I, of all the time, all the time to do it is after a win seems very strange. Also, I looked up <laughs> Kofi is billed at two twelve and Xavier is billed at two oh five. So you could kayfabe both of those guys in. Yes, do it. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that though. I don't like it. Why not? You don't like I, it? I, I just think they should take two oh five live and put it in full sale because I think it'll be fire in full sale. I don't, you know, okay. like, That's fair. they can't, that is fair. like, it doesn't work. It, do, it makes no sense to film it 
on Tuesdays and air it on Tuesdays when the guys are raw superstars. Like that's just strange. Mm, I don't know why no one right. has ever like wondered why they were doing that. Um, I think they did at first, and then people kind of just like because it's the cruiserweight. Like Gino said, nobody really actually gives a fuck. Yeah, I I haven't watched for like the last two weeks because I've been like. You know, that's right in my review time, like from 10 to 11, right before Talking Smack. That's when I get most of my writing done. Uh, yeah. And so I haven't gone back and watched like the whole show or whatever, unless someone has been like, oh, you know, go watch this match or something. But even, yeah, so even if I'm like kind of down on it, like it's, it's in a bad state. Um, and I don't think, I don't think it can be like helped that much as long as it's in these, you know, 15,000, 12,000, 15,000 seat arenas with nobody making noise, you know? I don't yeah, that, that meant at Royal Rumble, like I took a nap. Yeah. But I went back and re rewatched the whole show. And I was watching, I was like, damn. And I understand, like, this is what I, when the rumor came out, when they first decided that the cruiserweights were going to be on Raw, there was a rumor that came out that said Vince told them to stop doing so many high spots. Yeah. And I was and I was like, why the fuck? Like, does he not? Is there nobody who worked at WCW that told him Vince? That's the only fucking reason people cared about them in WCW, and because yeah. you know, and because Ray Ray Mysterio and some of those guys were actually stars, but they were held in that division but you don't you don't have a Rey Mysterio you don't have an Eddie Guerrero you don't have a Chris Jericho you don't have those guys you do not have that right now you don't even ha they don't even have a fucking Dean, Dean Malenko as of right now like guys that the crowd genuinely is invested in and cares about their story they don't have that right now so what you do have is like these high, these incredibly insane high spots. Grand Metallic yeah. should be all over the crew. Say he, where the fuck is he? He should be all over it. Like he should be one of the faces of the company. Mustafa Ali should be one of the guys like, damn, I can't wait to see what, what crazy thing he does next. But they're having them go out there and work fucking headlocks. And then they have the the other wrestlers see what they should what Vince should have do, done was told the other wrestlers you're gonna have to cut down on your fucking high spots and learn some goddamn psychology or something because now these tiny babies have that's what that's all they have. But instead he's like, nope, <laughs> less high spots. Like that makes no fucking sense. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about. Wanna talk like a political <laughs> hit, political hit. Right. <laughs> like there it is right there. Don't let cruiserweights do high spots. Do high spots. Right. <laughs> and and then continue to have your heavyweights and your women do the high spots that pop right? the crowd. Yeah. Come on now. Come on, man. Like seriously. When I saw Grand Metallic in the CWC, I was like, shit, he he's the one. That's the dude. But what like has he even? I'm sure he's had maybe a match. No, he has not debuted. He hasn't. Has not. He hasn't. Is it is it contract thing? Is I it a know. contract situation? Like because if it's not, why? It's got to be a contract thing because like that dude like that's one of the guys. I was like, damn, he don't have to speak a word. He don't have to do a promo. He will be over. Just have because that. Seriously, just, you know, the things that he does, uh, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy like, is. Dude, you're trying to break your neck or something? What's wrong with you? <laughs> right? Doing jumping ranas over the top rope to the outside. Like, oh, God. I yeah. just, I remember, I remember like the, the semifinal when like there were a bunch of like WWE folks in the front row or whatever, and it was Metal versus. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr., who, by the way, has a great shirt right now out. I don't know if you've seen it. It says uh, it's a black shirt with white lettering that says, this wrestler armbars fascists. And 
And I think <laughs> I, I think the proceeds go to the ACLU, maybe, or some other organization. It might be the ACLU, but yeah. So everyone should check that out if you like Zack Sabre Jr. I think that's a, that's a great shirt. But yeah, I remember hit like Metal League doing some of his crazy ass spots, and like I looked, and I'm like, no, Sasha's in the front row. No, don't let her right. look at this shit. Like you know, but turns out. Doesn't matter because cruisers don't do any spots, you know. <laughs> like, doesn't matter at all. So she can just do whatever the hell she wants, but not the cruiser weights. I don't know. It's, it's very, very odd. Yes, they should have them. They should. They have them wrestling the WWE style, and that's wrong. They should be having them wrestle lucha libre and uh, Japanese strong, which they kind of do. Like some of the strikes. Yeah, those those get responses from the crowd, mm -hmm. but they they're still structured in a WWE style match. Yeah, and I think they really, which was the opposite of the CWC, which like they got lost in translation really really bad with real this. fast. Yeah, what he like he does he did not get why the CWC was so popular at all. Like period. Like whatsoever, he does not. <laughs> no. He does not. No. So, what I think is going to end up happening is, I, I cannot. If it continues this way, I do not see them having a cruiserweight division next year. Nope. Yeah, I feel. I feel like before they scrap it, they'll try to <laughs> alter it. But it's not. It's not in a good spot, right? Even if if Paul is even saying it's a work in progress, like, you know. It's not a great sign. What uh, what are you? What were your feelings on Takeover? We haven't talked about Takeover at all. Oh, oh my God! Yes, uh, I watched it with my son, and I I, I had so much fun, and because he's like a little smart in training, but he remembered Bobby Roode from TNA. Oh damn! He did, uh, cause he like. My son knows who the fuck Kenny Omega is, and I barely know who the guy is. <laughs> like, watching it with my son, I don't know if that's why I enjoyed it so much. I thought, I didn't have any expectations, but I, from top to bottom, everything was from to great. And the main event, I was like one of the main people ragging on the main event. Oh, I was me like, too, for sure, yeah. I was, I was telling people whenever they would mention that that was the main event, I would be like, stop lying. What's the real main event? <laughs> people, stop lying to me. Nakamura versus Bobby Roode is not the main event. But, like, uh, that, that, oh, the guys, the psychology in that match, they, their chemistry, I don't, like, know if they are friends or if they knew each other, if they faced each other before, but their chemistry was top notch. The story that they told in that match was great. The authors of Pain versus DIY like even though I was saucy about the ending that was an absolutely great match like the fatal four-way for the women's championship I loved that match I loved that match so much I loved that ma and some people were kind of down on it and like sitting there watching with my son about he he hated the icons he cannot stand them he was like they are so weak they're so pathetic Oh, and I was like, I didn't say that to him because, you know, I want to keep him. He's a smart, but he's still kind of like a mark, too, because yeah, he's yeah. nine years old. So I didn't want to. I was like, I was smiling every time because he was like, every time they get in the ring, they get hit. And they don't, they're not doing. He was so mad. He was like, why are they here? He hated their very existence. <laughs> and that made me love the match even more. Oh, for sure. Oscar is a badass. And that's, I loved it. Like, there, there was no complaint I had about it. Like, I know people expect, like, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know why they expect these big classic women's matches. You don't have the four horsemen, four horse women there anymore. They're not there. They're not coming back. So please appreciate the matches for, for what they are. That was a very well out, well told story. And I love the fact that they protected Nikki Cross by putting her through the table and like mm -hmm. basically taking her out, and then Oscar whooped both of the icons' ass to win. 
Like, I loved everything about that. I did. Uh, what else happened? Ty Dillinger and... <laughs> I love that and, you just uh, called him Dillinger. <laughs> that's, is that, that's not how you... It's Dillinger. Pronounce it? Oh, Dill there's a G Dill in there. So. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I kind of. I I liked his match. I don't get why people were saying it made him look weak. Like they had to cheat an awful lot to beat him. Sanity did. They had to cheat an awful lot. They were cheating through the whole match. And like, if you have all this interference, it do Like, I don't like when heels have all this interference and they still lose. So. Like, you know, if you're cheating, cheat with a purpose. You should be cheating to win, not cheating to lose. So I didn't have an issue with that either. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any complaints. They really, I didn't have any expectations. And they over delivered. So yeah, that was a that was a great thing to see because I've been kind of disappointed in like the last couple of takeovers overall. Yeah, it was. Um... It was, I tell you what, it was quite quite a master coup by uh, Paul Levesque on his conference call saying he's he was disappointed in the product. Because for one, it motivated everyone who was on the show. Like, all right, we need to step our game up, you know? And I thought everybody, I thought legitimately everybody stepped their game up big time. And two, it set the expectations lower. For everyone going in like oh nxt hasn't been that good lately and even triple h is kind of down on it so like when they did produce and it was a really good show but it the app like the whole context of nxt being in a kind of a lull and then them putting on that show like made it that much better i thought um like the main event like as you were saying if you <laughs> i went back and i just pulled up the cage side previews and literally this is what i wrote about the main event match this is the entirety of what i wrote really they should just have the contest be decided on entrances alone and spare us all from watching the match pick <laughs> pick shinsuke nakamura like that's literally all i wrote like so i was just like this match sucks whatever blah blah and they're like halfway through i was like i'm kind of getting into this like you know like i'm kind of kind of starting to dig this now and yeah. i don't know it just kept the whole show was just really like, just overperformed everything. I really liked the opener. I really liked uh, Strong versus uh, Almas. I really liked the winners. Oh yeah. Match. I really yeah. liked the tag match. Every just like everything was like a th above a three to three point two five for me. And I think like the main I'd go like maybe four four two five, but everything was just really solid and. Mm -hmm. like, it helps, you know, the NXT crowds are still remain super hot for takeovers. So that bumps everything up just a little bit. Like it makes so much of a difference to have like a brand that is hot. Even if NXT isn't really hot, it still has the perception of being like hot and cool. Um, it's, that makes such a difference versus like Raw – even if like a raw starts hot, forty five minutes in, you'd be like, "This is a pretty good show, pretty good show." And then like an hour later, it'll the crowd will be dead silent, you know. And it's just like it's yeah. it's they can't keep up. The moment. They can't keep yeah. up. It's not it's not possible to like keep up three hours because they don't have enough good stuff, you know, to do three hours. Right. They know. So and they don't uh, and they don't really use their time wisely on raw either, but. A I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of NXT uh, and the tapings. They look uh, like it's starting to get back to its best. So I'm pretty excited going forward. Yeah, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna probably have to start checking out because I checked. I I stopped watching NXT like cold. I only watched the takeovers, but I might pop in some episodes. I did want to make a point, and Samoa Joe fans are gonna be upset with me. Uh oh, but I'm gonna say it anyway. He has, like, he was in the main event for a good pack. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the main events were not that great. And if Finn Baylor has had great matches with pretty much everybody else he faced, 
other than Samoa Joe. Nakamura just put on, like, that match is damn near classic to me. Like, just for the storytelling alone. And then Bobby Roode stepped his shit up, those DDTs. It's, they're mm-hmm. just DDTs, but they look vicious as fuck. So, I don't know what what it is, but Samoa Joe, he, he in the ring, he has gone down. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. And then he's on Raw. Like, who is he gonna fight? <laughs> I was... Like, I know a lot of people were hyped about Samoa Joe, and I'm like, but that means he has to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> and he he's just he's he's not he's not main event caliber anymore. I don't know. It's just it's not working for me at all. Like I it's to the point where I have to I wanna go back and watch his match with Baron Corbin to figure out why that match was so good. And then after that, it's been like, from like, eh, that was okay. To like, this is actively bad. I don't don't know. Maybe it's the way they aged it. Because he was never, like, he he talked, the way he talked in his promos, you would think he's going to Braun Strowman a motherfucker. And he's working 50-50 with these guys who are way smaller than him. So, I don't know. Maybe that was it. But like, why would I don't know? Um, uh, it's just it's not Samoa Joe in the ring is not working for me at all. I'm not, I'm not excited for his call up. I'm more excited for Ty Dillinger <laughs> to be called up. <laughs> um, yeah, but he's gonna be on the blue brand. Hopefully so, because as I said. Rod does not need any more geeks, and he's gonna get less, less, less and less over the if every week he's on Raw. Please put him on SmackDown so he can get over like Rover. You know, please, because that's that's the perfect character for a show like that. He can talk. He's not that. He's not, he's average in the ring. He's nothing yeah. spectacular, but he'll do. Yeah. But like he's he's got something. He's got momentum. I really do hope he ends up on SmackDown. I do too. Can we talk about the worst thing on SmackDown that really needs to go away in David Otunga? Oh my God. Why why is he there? (sighs) I need an answer. Like, we all, everybody needs to write a long, a strongly worded letter to WWE about how David Otunga is ruining. Like, he's not ruining it, but he's annoying. And like he's not needed in the company whatsoever. Like I don't advocate for people to lose their jobs, but I advocate for him to lose his because he is not adding a motherfucking thing to the show. Period. David Otunga sucks. Down with Otunga in 2017. We, I'm it's serious. We need to. This is ridiculous. We need to put an end to this. We need to put a stop to this before it goes any further. <laughs> yeah, it's. He, I don't, there are, are very, very few times when I hear something from him and I'm like, oh, that added to the product. And there are quite a few times when I hear him speak and I'm like, God damn it. Like, David Otunga sucks. And he's, he's also being very unprofessional. Like, I had already always suspected it because every time the Miz comes out, he takes oh, yeah. unnecessary shots at him. But it became clear when Miz was on commentary, he made some like the Miz was trying to live his life or some bullshit like that, and the Miz cut him down. He's jealous because they're both from reality shows, and Miz is way better and way more successful. That like people, every time you hear it, just wait. He always like. Not only is it because he does not understand his job and does not understand that you you don't just straight any talent the way he does, but he's doing that because he doesn't know his job, and also he's he just can't help himself. He's super duper jealous. The only thing he has going for him is that Jennifer Hudson is his wife. It's the only thing. What else is there? But why does that matter to WWE? I want to know too, because Jennifer Hudson don't even want him. Well, he's not wrestling anymore, 
so she might be good but she's never done anything she's never appeared she's never said anything nice about wwe yeah she is she like nothing so why would that what did he do to get that spot i'm gonna i'm gonna look this up real quick i'm curious now <laughs> personal just, life Seven months after meeting singer and actress Jennifer Hudson, Otunga proposed marriage on Hudson's 27th birthday. When was that? When was her 27th birthday? That was eight years ago. They got engaged seven months after meeting? Not even dating, just meeting? Holy shit. Oh my God, they have a son. David Daniel yeah. Otunga Jr., Mm hmm Oh, no. Mm hmm 20 years from now, there's going to be some awful commentator on <laughs> He's going to be an awful wrestler first. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it's just, it's really terrible. Like, you try to block it out, but, like, no, no. No. no, yeah. Every once in a while, I'll hear him speak because I usually only per I don't really hear Morrow anymore. Like I kind of miss yeah. all of his pop culture references, but I I hear JBL. I always hear him. Like sometimes, not always, but like if he's going in on like Ellsworth or something, I'll pay it or like a, a some random jobber or whatever, I'll pay attention. Um, but otherwise, like the commentary is kind of blocked out for me a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have that same like problem or not problem, but like scenario on raw when you're trying, when you're like writing and listening and the commentary just doesn't click. Yeah. I, I, you, well, see, this is, I'm a really big JR Mark and mm -hmm. like, he's the best to ever do it. And JR and Bobby the brain Heenan. And mm -hmm. if you're not on their level, I kind of ignore you a lot unless, you know, especially when I'm reviewing, like, I barely hear Corey Graves sometimes because, you know, I'm trying to focus. If they, like, add to the narrative, it helps. But, yeah, I don't really pay attention or put much stock into commentary. It's kind of weird because they're supposed yeah. to be selling the narrative. But, like, he doesn't even know what the hell the narrative is. <laughs> right. So the commentators can't sell it. They're confused, just like I am. They're like, what the hell? What's going on? What does this mean? Like, nobody knows <laughs> what this means. <laughs> what? <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. It should, it should be a fun road to WrestleMania. I, it's kind of funny. Like, last year, there were a lot of full-timers that were injured. And it seems like this time around, like the part times are the ones kind of banged up and nicked up. Like you work part time, dude. Why are you so? Well, I know why the Undertaker like, like the year two thousand that they didn't see the Undertaker wrestling much longer. Right. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was seventeen years ago, so I know why he's like fucked up. He shouldn't be working anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> oh god, more more of this next week more of probably this. We're, yeah yeah we're not the only thing we're gonna know for sure is that nothing's for sure <laughs> yeah, i mean elimination chamber like will be next week a week from sunday so maybe we'll see we'll have a full card for that yeah. probably we'll we'll be able to get a little bit more on that show i hope hopefully uh and then smackdown has a long time to go until mania Right. A long time, like almost two full months, mm -hmm. like seven weeks. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a tough sell for them, especially because like SmackDown. Uh, this has been my impression, and maybe I'm the only one who feels this way. But when in the lead up to co-brand pay per views, SmackDown kind of loses its edge versus like the night or two days after survivor series for like the whole next five six weeks it was just on fire non-stop because they didn't have any interference with raw or any possible like people having to deal with anything to do with raw whatsoever uh so i feel like that's when they kind of hit their sweet spot so i don't know if they're going to be building 
for like two straight months to Mania, or if they'll do another one of their like super show things that they did. Yeah, I think they're gonna do a super show. That would be my March. yeah. That would be my guess. I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see what happens with my blue boys. Definitely, probably going to be way more entertaining than whatever the hell Raw is going to do. <laughs> You're the Raw oh, reviewer. You got to say good things about Raw. I, I that that was not in the contract when we agreed oh, that. <laughs> like I'm still, I'm always going to root for Raw, especially because my favorite wrestlers on that mm -hmm. show. Of course, I want mm -hmm. the show to be good. Like if it's not good, I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. Especially during Mania season. Mm -mm. Yeah, especially if they do another tug of war with the belt. Oh God, listen, that never happened. Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for listening this week, uh, and continue to listen. Tell your friends, tell yeah. your enemies, tell everyone. Uh, you got anything? Any final thoughts? Uh, follow Tanya on Twitter at at militia. Malice Joe, right? Is that right? Did I get that right? Yes, it is. All mm -hmm. right. Follow myself on Twitter, Andrew M. Swift. Follow Cage Side Seats on Twitter at Cage Side Seats. Uh, like, subscribe, retweet, tweet at your friends, post comments. We all we appreciate it quite a bit. I, yes, I assure you. And. As always, we are here. We are just fans. We just want this product to be the best that it can be. And we hope that you do as well. We will see you next week. Good Bye. night.